E aí galera afiada, tudo certo com vocês? Eu estou filmando essas três facas japonesas aqui como uma introdução do vídeo que eu vou botar a seguir Na verdade são, é um vídeo em duas partes, uma tem 50 minutos e a outra tem 20 e poucos Que mostram, enfim, o processo de fabricação das facas japonesas Como são facas, ao contrário do que alguns dizem, são facas artesanais né? São produzidas em uma quantidade não pequena, mas são facas artesanais Uh, enfim, mostrando a dificuldade que é de se chegar nisso, a tradição das famílias Tem gente que está fazendo faca há 700 anos Então mostrar porque que essas facas são tão diferentes e tão apaixonantes uh, Acho que seria bacana vocês assistirem quando sobrar um tempo Para realmente ter essa cultura, ter essa ideia, né, ter essa noção eu gostaria também de dar os créditos para o meu amigo Euclides, lá do canal Stay Sharp, que também já me vendeu algumas facas e outros equipamentos. Uh, o vídeo foi ele que fez a legenda, né? ele que colocou as legendas no vídeo, nas duas partes. A introdução vai ser a mesma para esses dois vídeos, essa que eu estou gravando. Então eu vou deixar o link do canal do Euclides, acho que é bacana que vocês curtam, tem um conteúdo muito legal. E deixar o link do vídeo original também. Certo? Espero que vocês apreciem, gostem. E um grande abraço. Just begin with, like, in order to make good swords, good, uh, good quality steel, good quality blade, you need two things. One is good steel, very pure, high carbon steel, not much impurities inside. And also the technique to actually get that steel to the certain level so that it's um, feasible for blades. So Japan got those too. The uh, steel sand you can actually get here in Japan are very pure and they do purify them from uh, using the very traditional technique called the uh, tatara um, steel making process. It takes about four full days without sleep of making the um, raw, very pure carbon steel. That's that's one of the hardest the uh, steel that you can you can actually find. In, in the world, basically, it's the purest of its kind. This culture to appreciate all the works that's been put into that one piece, which I guess Japanese people have forgotten for the longest time. Be there were like you know blacksmiths everywhere, each blacksmith in one town. Back in the warlords period, that those warlords called for like sword makers to cut, settle into their place and start making swords and knives. Sword makers still likes to hammer the steel by, by their sledgehammers. You know, usually one uh, master holds the steel and two or three apprentices hammers the steel, but it's not really like you know economical. It doesn't really make sense to actually put into that much of labor into that one knife making. So they use the spring hammer, it's much faster, precise. There are five you know, places in Japan that produces uh, kitchen knives, like big five. Um, one in uh, Niigata, uh, one in Fukui, Seki, Sakai, Osaka, and uh, the uh, Tosa.
45年くらいになります現在私は80歳を超えましてで、えー、半ば隠居をしております私の父が三条市の生まれ、はい、そして昭和20年に神奈川県の方から三条へ疎開移転してきましてそして戦争が終わってから、あのー、日本の鍛冶屋の技術を一生懸命日本の鉄とか鋼これの研究をしたわけですで昭和20年に戦争が終わった時に三条に戻りましてそしてこれからは平和産業で,で同時に刀はもういらなくなりましたので平和産業にする使うにはどうしたらいいかということで。まあ、刃物と刀の両立てでいろいろ苦労したようです18で高校を卒業した時に父親の仕事が少しずつ動き始めたんですけれどもそれを手伝うことになりましてところがうまくいったんですけれどもドイツも戦争が終わって平和産業に刃物を選んだんだでしょうねあの日本と同じような人たちが西洋ガミ処理を作ってまた販売にも努力をするようなことになってまあ両方ドイツと相撲を取ってるような感じになりましたでその中でもって特別なことは。西洋ガミソリも日本ガミソリもひげを剃るという時にはどうしてもよく切れる刃を作るということが必要だからということで金属顕微鏡を引っ張り出してでそれでもって観察をしながら天然土石だとか腎臓研磨剤とかというものをうまく使う方法を開発して切れ味というのは何だろうと。いう疑問が大勢の名人とか一、えー、代二代三代とこう親子を続いてね仕事をしてる人たちのお仕事の中に何かあの大事な秘密技術があるんじゃないかとかいうようなことはちょっとただ売るというのとかをかけ離れましてねあの刃物の科学というような分野を。一生懸命調べたといういきさつがありますあの同業の日本の刃物鍛冶刃物を作ってる鍛冶屋さんがあの勉強をするっていうと私どもの考え方にね賛成してくださったのがご褒美でしょうねですから三条に限らず大阪京都三木九州と大勢の仲間ができましたですそれがね一つの財産かもしれませんお互いにあの技術を秘密にしていいものを作るという一つの習慣が日本にありましたけどもそうじゃなくていいことは公開してみんなで勉強して。いいものを売る時にはお互いにね、あのー、助け合いながら品物を開発するという習慣ができました。I've got my loco, never so so, so enjoy a full dope pro gadget flow. And a big amalgamation of my fair relations that I never had a chance to grow. With my loco, never so so, so enjoy a full dope pro gadget flow. I got amalgamations of my fair relations that I never had a chance to grow. I'm in the Nebuchadnezzar, killing my predecessors. You wanna nest and settle and sell your little Jetta. I'm in the Nebuchadnezzar, killing my predecessors. You wanna nest and settle and sell your little Jetta. I just wanna daydream and sin. And I'm sorta thinking it'll fit. After the war, like Second World War, Japan was devastated. 
there is nothing left. So everyone kind of went into the, the, those uh, fast-growing industry. So between 1950 to 1960s, 70, we had huge economic boom. Like GDP per capita doubled during that time. What happened that is that the Japanese culture became more of the consumer culture, big consumer culture, um, buy cheap stuff, and when it's all, just throw it away, get another one. That became the culture for Japan. It became a norm for everyone doing so, right? So they kind of had forgotten lots of traditional craftsmanship and kind of forgot to value how valuable that was. I think people like to save money. <laughs> but I also think that once people are introduced to a handcrafted blacksmith knife, there's no going back, right? It changes your life. You, all of a sudden, cutting is, is, is pleasurable, and you look forward to the moment when you can use your knife. Because I think most of our uh, customers, they really do have an uh, emotional attachment to the knife, as weird as that might sound. Lustful, even. Shiba's an interesting character. Shiba, he's, he's, a, uh, he's a master knife sharpener, right? He's really, he's okay. I'm good at knife sharpening. I'm very good at knife sharpening. But he's Wayne Gretzky. It's interesting because the blacksmiths revere him. But here he is, and his job is driving around in his van, going to farmers markets, and picking up people's knives from home, sharpening them, and bringing them back the next week. Eh, I am. Ah, no. Often, ah, no. Hammer, no. Tokinawa, あの、メンテナンスフリーっていうのがあると思うんです。で、あともう一つが本当の切れ味を皆さん知らないのじゃないのかなと思うんです。もうずっと Well, they just, yeah, they just, doot, 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 doot. it's easy for them. But I think, I think it's, um, I think there's some skill involved there. Blacksmithing's a job, man. It's hard. I mean, let's just talk about the danger, really, to be honest. It's, uh, you've, got, you've got machines that go bang and hum and whir and smash. You've got things, moving parts. There's fire. There's a, there's a fire that heats up your steel to 1,200 degrees. Um, there's a great big hammer that comes down, ready to smash you if you're not paying attention. It's hard work. If you're using coal, for example, there's, uh, there's problems possibly with respiratory situations. Um, and it's heavy work. You know, you're, you're standing by a fire, sweating, heaving lumps of steel around and bashing them all day. I know they, they make it look remarkably easy. They make it look great and easy and time. I'd like to try that. But I've done it a few times and, uh, and I realized that hammer, when it's hitting, I'm, ch I'm getting chucked around, right? I'm, and I'm not a little guy. It was just like really, really hot, like really hot. Just, you were working with like a 1,000 degree oven with about 800 degree steel, and you're constantly hammering it down. You can't cool it down until it actually shapes the form, and you have to quench it. Quenching probably about 1,000 degrees to actually do that quenching process. So I knew about the process, how it's done, how it's been treated and stuff and by knowledge but by seeing them work right in front of my eyes it's like wow it takes a lot lot longer than what I thought it would my 
controlling I'm feeling like I was smoking I'm high, speeding by Nobody here gonna slow me My brakes are broken I'm racing, I'm wild and coasting I'm fly, speeding by Nobody here gonna slow me Sharpening It's really hard work It's not all physically and has to be precisely, right? So every sharpening has been done by hand. With a big wheel, it's not, you know, like big, big chunk of stone, it spins. But to make it perfect every time is just amazing. Seeing that the Takemura-san's sharpening knives, like he was sharpening good 10 minutes, one knife not been even like close to finish. いや、もう僕あの小さい時からまあずっと僕であの あの、食事も作った時にきちっと美味しいのもできるしと。そ、ま、そこそこっていうか、ま、使えればいいと。安くて使ったらもう捨ててしまえばいいと。そういった時代が本当にあの、今昔のね、話で笑い話で済むかもしれませんけども、そんな時代が本当に遅ってきて。で、
They can't swallow it. The fisherman hauls them on board the ship and uh, makes them spit out the fish, and then the fishman gets that fish. So it's 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 using birds to catch fish. Humane, natural. is coming where they get all six boats to line up and they chase the fish down the river and then they capture them somehow. It's difficult to understand it's in Japanese. Hinoro-san is the uh, one of the greatest blacksmiths that we uh, deal with. He has very Stoic, strict idea. Very serious about knife making, obviously. Um, he does the hand folded Damascus look steel because no one actually makes that in a factory. あの、私はあの、で、長く切れ味が続くという私私目で見て製品を見て、あ、これはこんなもののけ
、うん、私はあの必要な部分ではあると思いますけどあのさっきも言ったようにあの切れ味には全く関係ないで私はあの日本の経済産業省があの指定する、えー、ですね、えー、伝統工芸士を持っておりますしなおかつあの新潟県の県の県をマイスター。を私は認定されておりますそれともう一つはあの昨年ありがたいことにあの県の,あの名工に認定していただきまして、えー、昨年表彰をいただきましたあの残念ながらまだいいもんだと思ってません<笑>あのこれは一生続くんだと思いますけどでもやっとあの一生通じて僕の一生が一生仕事をやる部分が10だとすると私はまだ6ぐらいだと思ってます。People want to find something that looks handmade, that looks beautiful. They want the aesthetic, right? And why not? I've never bought an ugly guitar. And I didn't meet my wife originally because I thought she'd be good with kids. <laughs> so you're allowed to be attracted to beautiful shit. n a f i l l a g e is a cool place, man. It's、um, basically, as my understanding was,、uh, a bunch of years ago, a bunch of you know, a number of blacksmiths got together. They made a big facility so a lot of them could work together and young men could come there and learn the trade. Because if I was a young man and I wanted to learn blacksmithing, I think I would probably choose to go where there was 20 blacksmiths working rather than one crotchety old guy in his、uh, garage. Kato san and Andrew san, a couple of older guys, older meaning early 70s. They've both been making knives for 50 some years. These guys are the real deal, man. They can, they can make, well, if it's made out of steel, they can make it. But、uh, it's the kitchen knives that they're really awesome at. And、uh, you know what the difference is, I guess, is if you do the same job for 52 years, you're pretty good at it by then, right? You're not bad. So、um, these guys are master, master, master blacksmiths.、Um, essential. Essential that they teach young guys the trade. <laughs> もうすぐで、まあ、72になります<笑> 27、はいえー、とうちはものの包丁を製造しておりますはいそれね最初はやる気は出てなかったんですよ、ね、でも市役所行くつもりで、うん、まあこういう、まあ、土木関係の仕事で高校の時に行ってうんほんでいざ就職決まってた時に親父がうん工場こんだけ儲かるでしんかっていうもう言うもんやで俺は人ねえってんやけどだいぶ抵抗したんやけどな、うん、まあかわいそうにのせっかく親父や言うんやでして、うん、刃物をやったんですえもう,もうきっかりでほんのまやね刃物がしたいとほんのもう思ってないし、うん、やっぱりあ親父やな、うん、で、まあ、うちの親父はとにかく見て覚えるっちゅう絶対手間に足を踏んで絶対教えてくれなんだろう、うんで横座入って親父やっててそれを見て、うん、それもやっぱ8年か9年まではこの横座へ入らせたらなんだろう絶対使うなっつってほんでたまたま NHK のテレビの取材が来て、うん、あっちの工場でほ、うんの時に、うん、息子さんも少し教えてるところを取りたいって言うんでほんの時初めて中入ったんや<笑>これが最初でね性格上、まあのまあ、俺はしょうがない、うん、世話しねえ性格でのもういつも言われにゃ、うんね、俺はなおさんで仕事でもこういう目が出てくるんやないかな
、重ねちゃうし、えー、もう慌てて作ってこんなになんじゃとかの、もうこれはもう治らんかい。そ<笑>れなんで、このカバーをみんな若い人にしてもらおうかなって、ね、俺が仕上げるときは若い人にはプロうまいな、うん、もうこれはありがたいなと思う。で、せめて一食だけでもな、今もうすることないで、これだけさせてもらおうかなと。だから、若い人も覚えてもらわないしな、もういつダメになるかわからないで。I view these guys as craftsmen. I, they would view themselves as craftsmen as well, although artistry comes into it, right?、Uh, watching Andrew San work, for example, he doesn't move fast, fast, fast with arms flailing everywhere. He moves slowly, but there's no wasted moment. He, he leaves his tongs in the same spot each time. He stands, he's probably got, she's probably got two dimples on the floor where his feet sit. Right? Like he's, he's, he is an artisan. Watching him work is art. But what he produces aesthetically and functionally, I think we could call you know, usable art anyway. I was born in the family of 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 そういうなところに出してもらって、まあ評価を得たんで、まあ自分らもこれからだんだんね、あの最近行細くなろうということで、このナイフレッジを立ち上げたわけですね。うん、目的というのはね、やっぱりあの今日我々業界小さい個人が小さいですので、みんなで力を出し合ってね、ええ、でまあ一つの束っていうんですかね、住民が固まりは強くなるっていうような感じでさせてもらったんです。うん。もう当然あのそういうようなことも目的でねあのさしてそういうようなことでさしてもらったんですあの実はあのうちの金井なんかやかましいったのはね町の中の狭いところで家事やってたんでは誰も当てすぎがないよとちょっとモダンな建物で明るいところであればね人も若い人も来るんじゃないかという考え方も一つ発想にありましたわねこれ立ち上げるときにまあこれやるときには自分も自分らのまあね、これからの先行きのことも考えての一つと結局普通の包丁はいたもんでしょ不動で圧炎した板材2ミリなら2ミリ板材をプレスで肩抜きして取り出すだけの作業ですわね我々はやっぱそれを担当することによって組織が密になって切れ味を良くするんですかねいやあの変な話でもや親としてはやってほしいでやれやれですわね自分らとしてはあんまりしたくなかったのは本音なんですただお前は兄貴親で家を継げ仕事も継げというような感じでしたわねやっぱりあのこの内部レッジ作ることによってねやっぱり究極のものを作っていきたいっていうのこれも立ち上げた時のねそういうような思いもありましたわねだけどやっぱりこの中の組合の運営とかいろんな面でなんか時間的にねできない部分が株があるんでそれで年ってね体も疲れが激しくなりましたんでその辺がねうんだけど一本作りたいなっていうのは自分の本音ですうん子供いますけれども、娘ばっかりですのでね、うん、そんで、まあ、池田君が甥いっ子ですので、私の妹の子ですので、甥いっ子ですのでね、ほんで、まあ、したいということで、受け入れたんですけどもやっぱり親方のような職人、やっぱりうちの親方、結構こだわりの強い人なんですけれども、まあ、しっかりこだわるところはしっかりこだわって、うん、やっていきたいかなと思いますね。はいえー、まあ生まれ育ったのは神奈川県の横浜なんですけれども母親の実家がもともと越前市竹風の方にありましてでそ,のその母親の実家が代々、えー、鍛冶屋をしてましてそ,のそういう経緯でこっちで働くようになりましたまあ自分最初にこの職業に就く時に本当にその職業じゃないといけないのか本当にその横浜を出ていくんかっていうような言い方をされたんですけど。でこの仕事を決めたんやって言ったら頑張ってこいやって言ってもらいましたねそうですねやっぱりせっかくこう長く続いてる伝統なんで自分のたちの代でこう潰すんではなくてやっぱり未来の人にもつないでいきたいなと思います。やっぱもっともっと使ってもらいたいですよね、内刃物のね、良さを、えー、使ったら全然違いますもんね、えー、すごい辛いっていうイメージがあると思うんですよね、でもね、実際作ると
すっごい楽しいんですよこの刃物作りってね、えー、なんでそうですねぜひ一緒にねその若い子とみんなで力を合わせて、ね、やっていきたいですね憧れを持つ職業だとは思うんですがそのやはりいろんなところにいろいろな場所にそういったことをしてるとかないっていうのとそれだけのやりたい人を全て雇えるだけの仕事量もない状態ですねでそれを僕はあの自分のブランド「正影」で、えー、その打ち刃物をどんどん売っていくことによって、えー、仕事を増やして若い人たちがその場で働いて伝統が継承されていけば、まあ、僕のやってる仕事の意味が出てくるのかなと思ってます。山本ですこの業界に入ってからは約10年ぐらいですねで今年一人で始めましたそうですね三条で生まれて母方の家系が鍛冶屋だったんでそこに、えー、まあ別の職業やってたんですけどあのあるきっかけで鍛冶屋の方にとにかく答えのない世界なんであの常に常にこう向上心持ってやらないと多分続かないんじゃないかなと思いますよねそういうやりたいっていう気持ちとか好きだけっていう気持ちも大切なんでしょうけど本当に向上心はないと続かないんじゃないかなと満足したら終わっちゃいますんでそれはもしされる方いるんだったら。そこは非常に重点を置いてした方がいいんじゃないかなと思いますいろんな好転がいっぱいあるんでどこかでいい時もあればどこかで悪い時必ずあるんですよで同じものを作っててもいいものと悪いものっていうか出てくるわけでそれをできるだけこうその範囲を狭めてい,きいければなと思って。常に常にできるだけ平均値を上げるような感じですかねやっぱりいろんな先輩たちに聞くとそれなりのそのまあうちら肉張りっていうんですけど肉張りとかその形状に対する、まあ、用途とかねあれに合わせて何かこう理由があったりするんでそういうのをできるだけ守ってこういければなあなんて思ってそれでこうできるだけ<笑>。やるんですけどそうすると儲からないんですけどね電話ばっかりかかってね<笑>いややっぱりあの答えのない世界だなっていうのが一番惹かれるいやあの自分の作ったものをこうとっても喜んでもらえるのはやっぱりその道具を作ってる人間としてはとっても嬉しいことで。私のおじにあたる方が、えー、3代目で,でそこからつい先立て交,交代して、えー、4代目となりました、えー、小さい時から工場で育ってて将来的には鍛冶屋になりたいという小さい時の夢があったんだけども年頃になって、えー、考えが変わって、えー、しばらくは離れてましたけどもやはり鍛冶屋がいいなということで25に。の門を叩いたということです。あのー、いいものっていうのはそもそも職人の世界では死ぬまでいいものはできない。納得したものがなかなかできない。多分死,死ぬまでできないだけども、えー、数年やってきてお客さんからオーダーが入った時
っていうのが多少はなんとか認めていただけてる部分もあるのかなっていうのがそれが実感ですよね。That the Seki knife show is probably one of the biggest custom knife show. There are a lot of blacksmiths and craftsmen for the swords, and、um, not only kitchen knives, but the hunting knives and folding knives in Japan as well. This is the biggest、uh, festival or show for those people. It's called the Seki Outdoor Knife Show, and、um, this, is, this is the big room. This is where all of the、uh, handmade knives are and all the knife makers. It's, I think it's probably the biggest one in Japan for networking and, and、uh, exposure. Like I said, it's a good place to see friends and suppliers we already have, but it's a great place to meet new people as well. I think for the knife makers, it's great because、uh, they get to meet customers instead of、uh, distributors. There's, there's obviously going to be some sellers or some distributors here, but they also get to meet a lot of the customers face to face. And I think it's a good deal for them to know their customers a bit better so they can get honest feedback. Some things that are very Japanese, and a vendo is one. This is a vendo. This is Aquarius for relaxing times. <laughs> no, that's Sun 20. For sweaty times, it's Aquarius because it's 29 degrees and 55% humidity, which I'm told is dry. <laughs> and it feels like pretty hot, damp shit to me. Dozo, dozo. Right in here, this is、um, again the main factory, Tojiro. What they do here is they, they, they have a piece of steel, thin piece of steel. They, they cut out a, a blank, what they call blank, which is basically like a, like a cookie, but it's exactly the shape of a knife. And then all the processes they're going to do in here after they've, they've heat treated it over in the other buildings,、so、they've made the steel hard, and then they've annealed it to take the internal pressures out of the steel. And over here, what they're going to do is they're going to grind the sides off to make it. Pointy to make it sharp. They're going to polish the sides of the blade. They're going to affix a handle. Shine it. You know, clean up the handle. Write their name on it. And hey, voila, we have a knife. It's the same process the blacksmiths use, except without all of the hard work of actually hammering stuff and, and, and working with the steel. They're just punching a cookie out. Car. It's like a street hockey game. It's a street hockey game. You gotta wait.、Uh, parking or just being polite. You gotta draw a line somewhere. And at our shop, we, we refer to knives like this as factory made knives. We,、um, we, think, we think of handmade knives like the ones where a blacksmith is actually from a small piece of steel with a hammer, laminated steel together, and hammered the knife into a shape. He's done all the work by hand, whereas most of the work here is done by machinists. They're great knives, they just don't have the same romance, the same je ne sais quoi of a handmade knife.、Um, but yeah, we,、uh, Tojiro knives are sound. Chefs love them because they, they, they work like crazy, you don't have to spend a mint for them. And、uh, since they're kind of, well, they're kind of plain looking, they're maybe less desirable than some of the really beautiful handmade ones, so、uh, they don't tend to go missing at work.、Mm, this is Kamoi san. He's,、uh, He's the head of international sales. So he basically gets to travel around to Europe, North America, and Australia, New Zealand. I like him because he,、uh, he likes to drink and eat good food. Gihei Hamono. I think. First time meeting. What I like about the knives here, the feel is great. The, the look is、um, standard. There's nothing really crazy about the look, but the feel is fantastic. The handles are beautiful, they feel great in the hand, but it's the、uh, materials that the steel the knives are made of. He uses HAP40 and、uh, ZDP189, and these are basically, if you think about them as high tech new steels. 
So they're kind of cutting edge technology, making super hard steel that stays sharp for a super long time, and we can get a really, really smooth edge on them. Um, I honestly, I think it's the future of steel for knife making. I think in 10 years, you'll see these steels all the time. When you're forging the knives, if you're forging older Japanese steels like Shirogami Ni or something like that, you have a very wide um, heat tolerance when you're forging, but with, with these newer materials, it's a very narrow heat tolerance, so you have to be very exact. The material is expensive to begin with, and it's very difficult to work with. And because it's so hard, you have to hit it harder and more often. So they, they can get pricey, but the performance is way, way up. I think this is a fantastic knife. I want to, uh, I want to sell them at my stores. I think that the market for Japanese knives right now is growing outside of Japan. I think that many Westerners are viewing these as usable works of art. The Japanese are so good at putting art into their lives. I don't know why they don't do it with more knives, to be honest. But um, it seems to me that uh, every time I end up uh, maybe at like a soba noodle maker, everything's beautiful in there. Everything's simple, but everything's like handcrafted tables with beautiful joinery, handcrafted boxes to put the noodles in after, with hand engraved uh, lettering that probably says soba. I don't really know. <laughs> so this, this idea of artisanship, I think, is what they'd have to capitalize, really, on to keep moving forward. Is the industry, or is the, is the desire for handcrafted knives in Japan growing? I don't know. But, を作っていく。いい宣伝になって日本に帰ってくればすごくいいなと思ってます。それがあの国内での販売をまた販売というかその皆さんの興味持ってもらえるま第一歩になるのかなとは思います。Car.